Hello once again and welcome to the parish of Kaslocher and Gorsainen midweek readings, prayers and reflection. For Thursday the 11th of March we have readings from Jeremiah and Luke. First of all from Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 21. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Go ahead, add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifices and eat the meat yourselves. For when I brought your ancestors out of Egypt and spoke to them, I did not just give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I gave them this command. Obey me and I will be your God and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you, that it may go well with you. But they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubborn inclinations of their evil hearts. They went backward and not forward. From the time your ancestors left Egypt until now, day after day, again and again, I sent you my servants the prophets. But they did not listen to me or pay attention. They were stiff-necked and did more evil than their ancestors. When you tell them all this, they will not listen to you. When you call to them, they will not answer. Therefore say to them, This is the nation that has not obeyed the Lord its God or responded to correction. Truth has perished. It has vanished from their lips. And from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verse 14, an argument about the power that is driving Jesus' miracles and exorcisms. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebul. Now, if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armour in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. One of the things about being uh, fairly happy talking and happy to speak is that it doesn't always make me a good listener. And at times I have to make a, a real effort to listen to other people and to God. And perhaps that's something in both of these readings. Jeremiah is complaining about the disobedience of God's people. The fact that they've given up the ways of justice and truth, the ways that they were taught in the Old Covenant, the Ten Commandments as we'd know them and more, and simply weren't listening. It's a factor too in the argument between Jesus and his opponents. They have to admit that he's doing some remarkable things, so they spread the story that he's using the power of evil. And Jesus says, well, that's very odd because it looks as if the power of evil is now divided and therefore on the way out. But deeper than that, there's a question about 
whether they can understand what Jesus is doing and where it comes from. Have they been listening to God? One of the great dangers of religious habit, religious tradition, is that if we stop listening to God, it can actually put us on the wrong side. Jesus' opponents were saying, he doesn't do things like we do them, therefore he must be wrong. He wasn't. They were. They'd forgotten to listen to what God wanted. Justice and truth, love and mercy, concern for those most in need. If they'd listened, they would have seen that Jesus was aligned with those things, that he was doing the things that God was concerned about, and that they had forgotten to do many of those things, and were getting further and further away. How do we remember to listen to God? Mm, good question. I suppose the first way is through our reading of scripture. Not all scripture is do this and don't do that. Sometimes the stories tell us about people and it's quite clear that it's a warning story. If you act like that, you might end up like that and you really don't want to. Sometimes people are more mixed. Here's a story of a good person, but you can see where they went wrong and you can see how their weaknesses impacted and partly spoilt that life. So, yes, read scripture, think about it, pray about it, talk it over with God. What's the relevance of that? Are you trying to tell me something? What are you trying to tell me? And then there's talking with other Christian people particularly, but not only Christian people. You may learn through fiction. Do you think about the television you watch and say to yourself, now, ah, is that a good course of action? Is that somebody I'd like to be? Or is that a warning? Sometimes circumstances play a part. Nobody a year ago anticipated lockdown, but lockdown has made us focus on who we are, where we are, and the people closest to us. Not always comfortable. Have we been listening to what God is saying through that? Have we been putting that into our prayers and trying to respond? It's a really cautionary story when Jesus is doing remarkable, powerful good and some people want to say that he's in league with the devil. We need to be listening to God in every way possible so that we can come out on the right side. For our prayers today, I'm going to use an outline from the Church of England. I suggest to you that sometimes it's a good idea to change the way you pray, to bring some refreshment to that conversation as it should be with God. So, in penitence and faith, let us make our prayer to the Father and ask for his mercy and grace. Father, we pray for your holy people. Today we're asked to remember those in Penderi ministry area, that's Townhill, Cockett, Carithin, Manselton for both. And with them further away, the Christians of Auckland, New Zealand, praying that they may triumph over evil and grow in grace. We pray to you, O Lord. For candidates for baptism and confirmation, and all who are new to faith or renewed in faith, that they may live by every word that proceeds from your mouth, we pray to you, O Lord. For the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of mercy and truth. 
we pray to you, O Lord. For the needy, that they may not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away, we pray to you, O Lord. For the sick in body, mind and spirit, those we know, those we hear about, that they may know your power to heal, we pray to you, O Lord. For the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of heaven and see you face to face, we pray to you, O Lord. Let us commend the world for which Christ suffered to the mercy and protection of God. And trusting in the compassion of God, you may like to join me. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now go into God's world in peace. Listen carefully for all that God will say to you, through scripture, through conversation, for what you hear and ask him about it that you may grow in understanding and in faith and in usefulness to the kingdom of heaven. Amen.